Welcome to the third episode of Train Story Tales. Today, I'm going to be looking at the two carriages behind me. They're carriages which come as a pair. As you can see, there is a small connecting corridor between the two. And that makes it unique on the island because we don't have any other uh, coaches or carriages with any corridor in them. But before I talk about the carriages themselves, I want to talk a bit about the railway line that they worked on. That line was the Merston to Ventnor West line, which was opened uh, in 1897 uh, and extended in 1900 to Ventnor West. And as its title suggests, ran from the Merston Junction on the Newport to Sandown line and took the railway through uh, a tunnel down to, through St Lawrence, having passed already through God's Hill and Whitwell. This was only a small line, uh, but it had the best view of any of the island railway lines. As the train came out of the tunnel going towards Ventnor, out of the tunnel before St Lawrence, you had a fantastic view over the sea. You were on a high cliff, in effect uh, being carried along a ledge, and that view was unparalleled with any of the, of the other railway lines on the island. Unfortunately, this line was never profitable and it was the first to close. Ironically, it was also the last to open. It ran from 1900 to 1952. And as I say, it was the first of the railway lines to close. The carriage on the left was built in 1897. The carriage on the right was built in 1889. The, they were both originally built as six wheelers. In other words, as well as having the wheels at each end, there was also a pair of wheels in the middle. But these were removed when the two became united for the, for the Sheppey Light Railway. And they were then turned into what's called a push-pull set and transferred to the Isle of Wight to operate on the line I mentioned. And they spent their whole working life until 1938 working on that line, but occasionally they would work on the Freshwater Yarmouth Newport line and also um, uh, another line, a small line to Benbridge. You'll see that the carriages are largely third class, but right at the far end on the left is a first class compartment. They're going to go in there now you'll see the difference from the first class compartment I was in last week. On the island, we don't have a royal carriage as such. Although Queen Victoria did travel once by rail to open the new hospital at Ventnor, the coach that she travelled in disappeared decades ago. This, however, is the carriage in which the queen, our present Queen travelled when she opened our carriage and wagon workshop in 2004. It's first class. Normally there would be white antimacassars um, for my uh, head. I'm afraid they're being washed at the moment. They're called antimacassars because there used to be the fashion of using macassar oil in one's hair. And that stained upholstery it came into contact with. And so there were white cotton or linen uh, covers which would just protect the upholstery from that. This is the carriage, as I say, that Queen Elizabeth travelled in when she opened our workshop. It's comfortable, it's like sitting in an armchair, and there's even a carpet on the floor. But I'll now take you through to the rest of the compartment, uh, which is called a school saloon. Well, here we are in the third class saloon. Seating here for, I think it's about 23 people, and it's quite comfortable. This carriage uh, was recovered from Newtown when it was taken out of service in 1938. It formed part of a bungalow in Newtown, and when we received it back, it was actually had a thatched roof, which makes it unique, I think, amongst our re recovered carriages. As I mentioned earlier, we don't have corridors on any Isle of Wight trains. 
And the reason for that is pure economics. You only need a corridor if people need access to toilets. Because on the island, the stations, the furthest they were apart was, I think, four and a half miles, a short distance. And therefore, people didn't need to use the toilet on the train. And so the toilet compartments were taken out. And this one, and the one we're going to go into shortly, as you can see, was turned into saloon seating. You can get far more people sat in here in comfort than you could if it were separate compartments. And of course, more people equals more money, more revenue for the railway. This compartment, when it was taken out of service in 1938, actually became a bungalow on Gurnard Marsh. Again, it was uh, recovered by us when it was no longer needed for that purpose. And in this part of the compartment, again third class, the saloon seating can accommodate something like 15 to 18 people, depending on how large they are and how intimate they are with each other. But the true secret of this push-pull set is what is behind me in the guard section. Now, the guard section, by definition, is where the guard travels, or the porter, when he wasn't collecting tickets. The advantage of this train was that they didn't need to have the stations manned because the porter could be, or the guard, could be on the train walking up and down and collecting fees and checking tickets in the two compartments. Luggage would be stored in the area behind me, but it's in the area behind me that the unique fact feature of this carriage lies. So that's where I'll go now. Now normally on a railway, at the end of the line, the terminus, the locomotive which has been pulling the carriages has to uncouple and then move to the back of the train, recouple to the carriages, and then in reverse pull the carriages back the way it came. It has to do that because obviously the driver would have a very obstructed view if it was going in reverse from the front of the train. And indeed there are rules about what one's speed if one was doing that. The advantage of this push-pull set is that there are a set of duplicate, duplicate controls at this end of the train which the engine driver can use to operate the locomotive even though the locomotive remains at the what I would call the front end. But I'll just explain what the controls are here but you'll see from this sign here that there's a bell system so that the fireman who remains in the locomotive knows what's going on and knows what to do and he too can signal the driver in the event of an emergency. But I'll start with the controls down here. That is not a steering wheel. That is in effect the, the brake for this coach. Uh, that would be operated by the guard uh, and would lock the, the brakes on for this coach, effectively immobilising it. To the left there, that is part of the Westinghouse braking system, again operated by the guard so that he can perform an emergency stop with it if necessary. The controls that the driver would use are here on the left. In the corner there is the main regulator. It operates by compressed air and in, in effect it controls the regulator from here. Up here you can see that there is a dial which registers where the regulator is, so that the driver knows how open the throttle is in effect. The regulator allows more steam to the engine. The wider open it is, the faster the train goes. Also here is um, the system for the actual pneumatic uh, air system that links the two together. I understand in practice that because of things going wrong, it was not unknown for the driver to sit here and not control the throttle at all, but by the bell push, there, signal to the fireman how fast and how open he wanted the regulator. So there were times when uh, this didn't work perfectly. These are actually dummy controls. They don't work anymore. And there is one thing missing, and that is there. There's a small whistle on the outside. There would have been a lever there, a valve, for the engine driver 
to blow the whistle uh, when approaching level crossings and other hazards like that. Various dials up here um, measuring the steam pressure in the steam chest, the steam pressure uh, for the engine and also the pneumatic pressure for the um, controls at this end of the train. One advantage of doing these films is that I can take you into parts of the exhibits where the public aren't normally allowed to go. And that's true of the section we've just been in, the guard section of that carriage. It's a pity that the public cannot see the controls up close. But that's it for this week's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've found it interesting. Thank you for watching.